beautiful sunrise and our July 26th meeting. Where's Gus? Would you lead us in the way? Stand up, please, and face the flag. Repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Darlene, do you have a thought for the day? A dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream you dream together is a reality. John Lennon. Yeah, and I had a uh, thought for the day from Oscar Wilde. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Nice. Oh, <laughs> you Joe. Hi, Bill. Nice to see you. Here. Good to be seen. Yeah, good. So, how long are you this morning? Sound wonderful. Everybody know the words? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day. to welcome my guest, Lana Brogan, who is the Executive Director of the Health Care District. So you know that I'm in her corner. I hope you are too. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to introduce two guests. One, our speaker this morning, uh, Assistant Sheriff Rob Giordano, who will be taking over when Steve Freitas retires, and the new head of the Community Engagement Unit of the Sheriff's Office. Misty Harris. Hi, Miss. Morning. Morning. I got that wrong. Community engagement liaison. Perfect. <laughs> now we will have our vocational talk. Brian. All right. So I have just a couple minutes. Um, my vocation is, is mostly high tech marketing. I grew up actually way back in the, um, what do we call it, the orange skies, burning eyes, uh, Southern California, if you guys remember that. It was horrendous, like the skies were orange all the time. Um, so that's where I sort of developed the, the desire to clean the air, do alternative energy, do things that are going to clean the environment. Um, I actually went to um, 
school at Stanford, and they really encouraged um, to do standard fundamental engineering. They didn't have anything like alternative engineering anything back then in those days. So I studied mechanical engineering, and I went into the market. Silicon Valley at the time, there's no not a lot of mechanical engineering. It was mostly uh, jobs in, in defense, because it's Reagan years. And there was, a, so I went into marketing pretty quickly. Uh, because I was able to communicate technology, and um, I didn't think I was very good with that engineer. So, <laughs> <laughs> so actually, um, I did a lot of telecom marketing, uh, telecom systems, like the big boxes you see on the side of the road, or the you know, boxes in the telephone pole. I've marketed those all over the world for a long time. And those were, that was fun. That took me all over the place. And then what brought me here was Telecom Valley. So I thought, wow, well, I always wanted to come to Son Sonoma County because it's so exciting. Uh, so, but there was nothing, there was no technology here. But that just happened to happen in 1999. So while I was living in Europe, um, we saw that, we wanted to come back home, and we came here. So there's the Telecom Valley with 10,000 employees and all these companies that was booming like that. And uh, that lasted a good year and a half. <laughs> it was a bust, and everybody sort of went, went away. Any younger kid now doesn't even know what Telecom Valley is around here. But so soon after that, Dan, myself, and Chris Day, we started a company in chips. We made chips for fiber to the home networks and cable TV networks. That did really well. Now there's like 80% of the video that you see in this country goes over goes through one of our chips somewhere. So that was. That was wonderful. Um, we had all our investors' money. We wanted to make them more money. But then, but I also wanted to get back more to um, what I really wanted to do is green technology or alternative energy, um, clean the world up. Uh, so, just about two years ago, I joined up with another person who had been studying technologies all over, all over the world in this place, and we worked together at Advanced Fiber Communications, one of the telecom companies. And we started a company, Resynergy. And what we do is we actually take waste plastics, so junk plastics, that 90% of plastics are not recycled. We think we're doing some good when we throw in the bin, and a lot of that is, but most of it is not. Um, and that's, there's plastics coming from all over the place. Uh, there's a lot of studies recently. There's about 30 million tons uh, thrown out every year in just the US alone. So what you can do with that is that comes oil that comes from oil, and they're elongated chains. Um, the oil is elongated into long molecular chains, which makes plastic. So what you do is you just heat that up, just heat it up. Um, you break those chains down, and you bring it back into oil. So it primarily comes out as diesel, about 70, 80% diesel fuel. So we have this system. It's a you hear that wall? It's in a 20 foot container. Um, it's really compact compared to what our competitors are doing. We use microwave technology to actually do the heating. So it's really compact, just like your home microwave. It's much faster, much more efficient. We're able to insulate that really well for really low losses. So it comes out very clean and very efficient. Uh, and because we don't actually burn, it's, it's just heated without oxygen. Uh, there's very, very little CO2. So what we're doing, what we're breathing here in the room, that level of CO2 is about uh, that would support all Sebastopol plastic waste. Um, so this system, these, each one of these um, costs about $300,000 uh, per ton. So each customer will do somewhere around 20 to 40 tons a day of processing, and there are thousands of these customers. Um, so we are in the lead in the market as far as compact systems where you can put one of these down in a recycling center and have things processed right down to the five to 10 tons a day, which is a pretty small amount starting point. Most people, again, like our 20 to 40 tons that we're targeting. Um, big, huge sites will do you know, 100 tons a day. But anyway, we're, we're really well positioned. Um, at some point, I'll, I'll show you, give you an update when we, when we really go big, but this is, this is thinking really big. Um, and sort of my philosophy on, on life is one, two things. One, I'm really grateful and alive every second. I've had a lot of tough experiences. Michael visited me in the hospital recently and twisted my stomach. And um, that was just two, three years ago. Uh, I lived in Africa for a couple of years and um, seen um, 
You know, polio is a pretty gnarly thing, but leprosy, when you see it in the streets everywhere, and you see that that's a country that was recently 84% unemployment. We visit enough places like that, and then with Rotary as well, you, you just have a great appreciation for life. Um, my parents, I'm going backwards in time, but my parents were divorced when I was five, six years old. And it kind of, my dad took me all over the California to see a bunch of, I was a hippie kid, basically. And then I lived with my mom, and she was in the poorest parts of Sacramento. So I lived like in the ghetto. I fought, like if I had a gun, I would have used it. But I used chairs and other things in classes to fight with kids. I was in first grade. Um, it was it was brutal. So coming out of that, I just want to thank my stepfather pulling me out of that, putting me more of a Brady Bunch environment, and I was able to see what a stable life is. Uh, he's the one who took me to Africa, and he's the one who told me um, I want to be, become a professional football player or baseball player. That's what I really wanted to do. And he says, "Well, guess what? Those guys usually they go to a good college and they get noticed at the college." So you should get good grades. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I did that, and then um, I always wanted to go to UCLA, and I got in there, but then I, people told me you should apply to this Stanford thing or whatever. And I'm like, I'll do that. And then I got in, and I go, like, oh, shoot, I'm going to have to go here. This is going to be a great place. So that, that really changed my life a lot. And um, because of all those experiences and the tough parts of it, I'm, I'm just grateful. I, I'm alive, standing every day, and I didn't become a football player, but I, I ride my bike all the time and do great stuff. So anyway, that's it. Yeah. Is there a home use? Terry, I think we ought to get him signed up for a full program on that system. I, I think that'd be a fascinating program. Field trip. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, field trip. So today's greeters want to thank Bill Sodius and Alan Bertozzi for being greeters. And Mike Team, Jim Bertero, and Brian Bauer. <laughs> Beatles tie of the week is. <laughs> uh, took it to Brian. Yeah, <laughs> took it to Brian. Wow, Julie. Yeah, I know, but a lot of people look at all the other stuff and don't see it anyway. So this day in history. July 26th in 1579, Sir Francis Drake left the coast of California and headed east. And, uh, uh, west, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and ended up uh, going to the He was the first guy. Englishman yeah. to sink, circumnavigate the globe. Uh, the globe. In uh, 1775, the Continental Congress created the post office with Ben Franklin as its first postmaster general. And also in 1878, Black Spark robbed the uh, Wells Fargo State right up here in uh, uh, Duncan's Mills. And, uh, Black Bart was a real character. He was actually an Englishman. Came over here. He lived in a hotel in downtown San Francisco. And uh, he was known for leaving <coughs> little poems as he uh, as he robbed the state. He'd, he'd take the money out and then uh, leave a little poem in there. <coughs> Black Bart, 1878. July 26th, birthdays in history. Gene Shepherd. Remember Gene Shepherd? You may not recognize the face, but he was the voice behind uh, uh, Christmas Story. And he actually wrote the book, Christmas Story, for Alfie. Yeah, because he So Gene Shepherd, born in 1921. And in 1956, Dorothy Hamill, America's sweetheart for the 1976 Winter Olympics. Rotarian birthdays. Oh, oh. Joe Gaskell. Oh. Right. Joe, what, what have you in yeah, store for your birthday? Probably the uh, maybe the early sitting at Denny's. What? The uh, senior sitting at Denny's will probably <laughs> do. Anything else? What else? No. 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 What's left after that? <laughs> I love this picture of Joe with the grandkids. Yeah. 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 Anniversaries. <laughs> Jim and Jackie Portero. Yep. Oh. 29. 29. And what are the plans, Jim? 
have absolutely no idea. You can do it. <laughs> the good news is I know the date, and then it will happen. The bad news is I have no idea. I know Joe. She'll tell you. Well, you better figure out something good because she deserves it. <laughs> and she does. So, announcements. <laughs> uh, where's Matt? Uh -huh. You want to talk about the SCART meeting coming up? So, uh, tomorrow evening, uh, at John's Vineyard, we have a SCART meeting, the Sonoma County Association of Rotary Clubs. And there are going to be a number of people uh, who will be from this club attending, and I'm grateful for your attendance and for your help. Uh, and we uh, have amassed an astounding number of 90 people who will be there. So it's going to be a great time. And uh, we'll sell some keynote polio and with Michael's assistance and other help. And so it'll be a great time. And uh, there we have it. What time? 5.30. 5.30. I will say that, that uh, normally speaking, and I think I probably shouldn't even mention this, the, the cutoff for... Uh, uh, for making reservations and for indicating your desire to come was uh, Monday noon. So I'm not sure that anything could be done about that, but uh, there you go. Don't sign up. Thank you. Uh, sign up. Uh, August 4th, the first Friday is going to be at Marty Webb's side. We'll have him announcement, but he's back <coughs> at the Boy Scout Jamboree. Anybody got any uh, comments about Boy Scout Jamboree? Uh, I'm, oh, sure. yeah. I'm just waiting to hear what Marty has to say. Yes. <laughs> so I, I can tell you what Marty was saying. Um, and it was, it was an embarrassment, I think, for, for most everybody who heard that. It's certainly out around here. Uh, but the President of the United States has always been the honorary president of the Boy Scouts and, and was extended an invitation to speak. They um, just can't control that. They had very clear what it was about, what they were supposed, to, what he was supposed to do. Very clear with the crowd how they were to behave, and this guy just showed the ability to whip a crowd of, of uh, thirty thousand teenage boys into a frenzy, which is pretty damn easy to do. Um, so they're embarrassed. They're apologizing uh, for the speech he gave at that thing. And he went, as you can imagine, off the rails. The president went off the rails with what he did the other day. So that's probably what Marty would have said only in fewer words. A little more precise. Could you pass the mic over to Becca? Oh, I'm for the next announcement. What's that? For the next announcement. Yeah, that for polio? Could have been worse. Hi, good morning. On your tables are a wonderful opportunity to do two things for you at the club. We are 100% involved in the Paul Harris every year. Your donations to our polio, uh, to Pedal for Polio, goes directly to that effort on your part. So when you sign on the sign-up sheets and you would like to support one of the three members, well actually four because my wife is writing with me, would you raise your hand, you writers? Yes. If you, uh, and you can sign up on that sign-up sheet, if you would, please, and support the effort. I've heard that Petaluma Club is putting in, at minimum, $50 per person. I'm not suggesting you'd have to do that. I'm just letting you know, because our governor has thrown out the gauntlet. And let's see, if we're going to be writing from the uh, 13th, or the week of the 13th, for those six days. So we're driving up to Crescent City on a Sunday, and then we're riding for six days. And we're going to, the last day is going to be from Cloverdale to uh, Petaluma. So if you'd like to ride with us, you can buy that day and come ride with us and end up at this incredible feast and congratulatory uh, opportunity to be all together as Rotarians at the amount of money uh, that we are going to uh, generate. It's going to be somewhere in the, the $85,000 range for, uh, for polio. So uh, we're real pleased and proud to be able to, uh, to continue with that. And thanks for your support. Remember also that $85,000, by the time it gets matched on a two-to-one basis by the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, that's over a quarter million dollars to helping in polio. Wow. Tiny little Sebastopol, a tiny little uh, District 5130 in the first month of the year can be raising a uh, quarter million bucks. Yeah, yeah.
Uh, also, on August 19th, um, at the end of the ride, the, you don't have to ride in order to come to the celebration. You're certainly welcome to. Uh, on that last day, you can go all the way from Cloverdale down to kind of about 50 miles. If you don't want to go that far, you can pick us up at um, Veterans Memorial Beach in Healdsburg, you know, right on the river there. We're going to stop there, have a brief break, pick up additional riders. Then we're going to drive down to, ride down to um, Juilliard Park, where what's happening at that time? The bocce ball tournament. So the district bocce ball tournament is happening there. So we're going to pick up additional riders, plus have a whole bunch of people that are already there, uh, probably starting to drink at 8 o'clock in the morning. And we're going to meet there and pick up additional riders and, and then come on down. And then once the bocce tournament is done, they're going to come down and join us all at Lucchese Park. So it's going to be a good time. Uh, Join Sebastopol Rotary Picnic. Michael. So after you get off the bikes on the 19th, on the 20th, is the uh, Joint um, uh, Sebastopol Rotary Picnic. Uh, our club and the new club uh, are going to meet uh, from noon to 4 o'clock. It's being hosted by Bob Hirsch out on Montgomery uh, Road. The flyer is on the website? Yep, it's the flyer our, is on the website. So on the calendar. information there, I will remind you more in depth about it. You go to the calendar, go to August 20th, and you click on it, and you get the whole flyer there, so all the details. Um, and last but not least, of course, Labor Day weekend, the Cajun Festival coming up. Uh, just, uh, uh, we're not going to beat that to death here today, but we'll have a brief announcement by Matt. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, that last Wednesday before Cajun weekend, uh, we're not going to have a program that's going to be dedicated to doing whatever training and asking whatever questions we need and, and getting ready for agents. So it's all about that. Yes? Um, so uh, we really appreciate all the effort that has already gone into uh, the Cajun Festival. We had a meeting last night and appreciate the attendance. And we will be calling upon you. We've got your name and we have your number over the next month to help a little bit with the effort. We figured out a way to streamline the volunteer uh, effort and to make sure that the club is not overworked or overburdened with this festival. And Terry will be knocking on your door and we hope you respond. But uh, yeah, we've got a great lineup. Michael and um, Scott have assembled a wonderful world-class Cajun Zydeco and Rockabilly lineup featuring Gina De La Fosse the first day, who's a legend in the Zydeco community, and we're really delighted to have him, as well as Phil Alvin and the Blasters the second day at Rockabilly. So it should be a great show. Our costs are running something on the order of $5,000 less than last year, and our sponsorships are up. So it's looking pretty good, and uh, uh, we're very optimistic, and one way or another, we're gonna have a great party and a great fundraiser. So the, the promotional effort is really underway. The radio ads are going to be starting in another week or 10 days. Uh, newspaper ads have already been running. We've got a full-blown Facebook campaign going. Uh, we're over 700 likes now uh, on the Facebook page. So that's really good. That means you guys have been sharing. Uh, it's really important from this point on, when you see one of the posts that come through on your, on your um, uh, timeline there, uh, be sure and share it, please, so that we get the word out even more. Uh, we're reaching like, you know, 25, 30,000 people a week now with our uh, with our blast and boost. So we're reaching a lot of people, and you know, hopefully that's going to convert into sales. And it'll only happen if we all spread it. So please do. Um, we have uh, another couple of announcements, but before we do, I just, uh, Wayne is back. Hey, I didn't Wayne. see it. Wayne! Wayne. 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 Well, it's good to be back. Yeah. I feel great. Things are going well. So, thank you, Bill, for addressing that. And uh, if anybody's free Friday, I need to go to San Francisco. So, <laughs> I need to ride. Okay. Anyway. Well, listen, uh, while you're waiting, while you're standing, Wayne, <laughs> welcome back. Oh, Wayne didn't make it to my uh, debunk where uh, all of my uh, uh, board members got their rockets, so I brought your rocket. Oh, wow. <clears throat> oh. And lights up. Let's try again. 
turned off now. Good luck. That's your nice Yeah, that'll keep you awake. Really quickly, back to Cajun. I sent out last night a second uh, blast about signing up to volunteer. And what we're doing with that is trying to force us into the 20th century, you know, the 21st century, by using a database online to pick your volunteer spots. Please use that, because it makes my life a hell of a lot, oops, I sound like president again, a lot easier, um, and because when people go up and say, oh, I, I, I want to sign up for this, I'm not going to remember. So please use that, and you can take that thing that I sent out last night and share that, there's that word again, Share that with your friends or people who you think they want to volunteer, and they can use that link and go right to the site and sign up. So it does make it's much easier. We can manage it better, but we need to have you take advantage of that um, modern technology. I hope everybody noticed that the big standing bulletin board is back up, and we want to thank Wayne for getting it uh, physically put together, and we want to thank Elaine for adding some content to it. If you have announcements or sign up sheets and things like that. Uh, you can get them posted on there. Uh, there will be other things of information, so when you come through your um, registration line after you buy your uh, lottery tickets and everything, you can uh, take a look at the announcements. Blaine, did you have something as well? Good morning. Yeah, it's the first of the Rotary year, July through June, and now it's time to start thinking about what committees you'd like to work on. So we have all the committees listed here. There's a pen. It's real simple. We'd like to see each of you sign up for at least two committees. That's, that's above and beyond Cajun and Casino Night, because those are our fundraisers. But there are some interesting committees, and I will be sending blurbs out about what those committees consist of during the week. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Any other? Just real quick, uh, fourth Thursday of every month, I know it falls on the day, the evening of SCAR, but the Chamber of Commerce does their business after hours. In the past couple years, UMQA and our Rotary Club has uh, gotten together in August to uh, host the business after hours. So I'm doing that again at UMQA Bank. Kathy, our membership chair, is helping. It's a great way for, if you have businesses, to connect to the uh, community and also a potential place to bring in new members. So save that fourth Thursday that evening. Okay, well, I'll get that added to the announcements then. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm here to uh, help my wife, help my wife Phyllis announce the uh, launch of her book of poetry that was published uh, very recently. And she's very excited about it. She'll be doing a poetry reading. Uh, Monday, August 7th at Aquas Cafe, and uh, if you're interested, I, I have copies of the books to sell. She'll sign it with a personal message for it. And in honor of that, I'd like to uh, make a contribution to all three of our our writers for uh, polio, and I'll, I'll donate the amount for all three of you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of information here about Rob's background, his education, etc. I'm going to skip all of that. And if he wants to talk about it, he's more than welcome to do so. Instead, I'd like to tell you about the first time that I had any interaction with him. It was about 